Hello everyone, welcome to Jessica Academy. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics of Llama Triplets, the subsurface scattering. So I have a simple scene here. I have imported the statue geometry into my scene and I have a PXR dome light for the lighting and I have attached a Studio HGRI to it and that's it. My scene is very simple and this is the default render for my scene. So yeah, and I'm just going to assign the Llama surface to my geometry and I'm going to turn on the IPR to see the result as expected. Everything looks black, so I'm, I'm just going to create a Llama Triplus. So I'm just going to connect the out color of our Llama Triplus to the material front of our Llama surface. Cool, everything is working fine. And uh, let's change the color. It works fine. Let's change the radius. Maybe let's choose a color in this. Nothing works here, so the radius is not working fine. So basically, whatever the parameter that comes under the triplets will not work until you enable the compute subsurface in the llama surface. So this is the overall switch of our llama surface. So basically, when you are using subsurface, it needs to be enabled. So I'm just going to turn this off, and you can see we can we we can see some good scattering going on here. So let's say. Uh, let's increase the color, the brightness of the uh, radius. So maybe I can crop the render region and uh, I'm just going to increase the scale to see the scatter. Maybe let's increase to enter it. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's reduce the color. Yeah, as you can see here, we have a uh, good uh, scatter going on here. So yeah, we have the color here. Basically, the color is the outer color of the surface of our geometry. So basically, this is not connected with our interior color or the, the color of the volume. So uh, let's say in order to explain, I'm just going to assign a simple color here. So maybe let's increase the brightness a little bit. Yeah, as you can see here, The color just affect the outer color of the surface of the or geometry so the inner color or interior color is red as you can see here if i change this to blue the inner color will work like a, a bluish uh, interior if we have something like that so yeah let's go back to the color that we have already so yeah the radius is actually the parameter that defines what is the color of the interior of our subsurface scattering of our geometry and the scale defines how much the light how far the light penetrates into the geometry so basically if you reduce this maybe i can keep this 10 so you can see here we don't have that much of scattering going on so basically when you're working with subsurface scattering so basically if you have a skin texture you need to assign your diffuse or the base color of your skin texture in the color and uh, you need to multiply your diffuse color with the red color or you need to uh, paint a separate uh, radius for your subsurface scattering like a, a very reddish kind of a, a deep skin color so yeah let's set this back to 100 so basically it, it multiplies with this radius color so we always need to keep that in mind so and we have this, the subsurface mode we have four different subsurface modes are uh, available for us we have two path traced and uh, two diffusion burly mostly i'll use the path traced one because path traced one is the physically accurate one and it is uh, it gives you a very rich look to your uh, subsurface scattering so uh, basically you have two different path traced here uh, one is path traced Davis and the other one is path traced exponential. I'll mostly use the path traced Davis. It has more control. I'll explain that in a minute. And you have the diffusion Burley. And uh, if I switch this to diffusion Burley, uh, the diffusion Burley is not completely physically accurate, but it is fast to render. As you can see here, uh, it is it is much faster comparing to the path traced one. So if you if you want your shader to be rendered faster or if you if you don't want your shader to be physically accurate or if your geometry is going to be uh, far away from your camera maybe i'll go with the diffusion burly other than that i'll choose the 
Patrice Davis or Exponential. So yeah, uh, let's explain about the Patrice Davis. Actually, all the four different modes are computing the subsurface scattering with the four different algorithms. So all the four uh, mode gives you different results. So I'm not, I'm not just gonna explain about all the four variants. Maybe you can go and check with all the four variants and you can compare them and you'll get the idea. So we don't have that much of time for this tutorial. So I'm just going to explain about the path trace Davis. So here, uh, yeah, we have the anisotropy. The more you increase the anisotropy, the surface will work like a transmission, transmissive uh, surface, like a, a less diffused and like a jelly kind of uh, result. If you want, you need to increase the anisotropy. And uh, let's increase the scale as well. So it is like balancing between the scale and anisotropy. So let's increase this to 300. So we will have that jelly kind of a look. So yeah, and let's undo it. And uh, let's set the anisotropy value to zero and we have the bleeding. So basically bleed is like another scale of our subsurface scattering. Basically, uh, when you use the DMFP or the scale of our subsurface scattering, uh, most of our geometries details will be gone according to the subsurface scattering. But I usually play with bleed in order to uh, preserve some of the details on uh, on the geometry. Basically, it works like another scale, but it basically preserve the detail on top of your geometry. It is like we always need to balance between the scale and bleed. So we need to go back and forth to uh, check and set the result. And uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's reduce the scale a little bit because we have a good amount of bleed here. So yeah, so like this, you need to actually define uh, or tweak your shader. The, when it comes to subsurface scattering so yeah and uh, we have the unit length i usually don't mess up with this unit length so we can keep this as it is basically the unit length is the overall scale multiplier of our subsurface scattering so we can keep this as it is and yeah and one more thing that we need to understand is when we change this uh, subsurface mode to path traced exponential basically we don't get the bleed value here so bleed parameter here so if you want uh, the bleed parameter or bleed control to your subsurface you need to always go with the Davis or if you don't want to complicate too much if you just want to rely on the DMFP or the scale and radius you can just go ahead with the, uh, the path traced exponential it is very less artistic uh, but it is physically accurate and this is the artistic way for tweak your shaders so basically i usually choose with the patrice davis because it has the bleed control and it is much flexible when comparing to other subsurface mode and when it comes to uh, diffusion burley it is even easier comparing to all the other modes so yeah let's let's uh, render it and let's see what is the result is maybe we can increase the subsurface scattering even more cool uh, here i have a decent render and uh, yeah i i really happy with uh, the way it works here and now i'm going to explain how we can add the uh, Spickler to our subsurface scattering. It is very straightforward. We need to add the llama layer as I exp explained in the previous tutorials. And let's create a llama dielectric. And uh, let's connect this out color to the material front. And connect this to the material base. Connect the dielectric to the material top and I, I'm just going to increase the roughness and reduce the reflectivity
yeah maybe i can i can change the color to something like gray cool so here is the finished render so i'm happy with the result and yeah that's it for this tutorial hope everything is good yeah thanks for watching